just got f***ing permabend. 575 to 478. Go ahead, 575. The streamers are live and currently exploiting request permission to issue a permanent ban. You have a go, 575. Enjoy. Roger that, and thank you. These cheaters have been punished by the men and women from Ricochet. All streamers are guilty until proven innocent. Here's Guardian True Sight running in Call of Duty 4, using PS5 footage. Notice how the computer vision model detects the enemy player, differentiates them from everything else on screen, and draws the overlay you can see. Now, I keep these overlays disabled in my audit videos, so casual visitors don't assume the player has wall hacks. That just wouldn't be right, but they're always active in the background. I coded the system to segment and track the head, upper torso, lower torso, and legs. Now, Although it was originally designed for Warzone, it still works pretty well in COD 4. And since I can't launch a Warzone private match for the demo, this works okay. Oh, and the lines you can see? That's just what I use to assist with the soft aim tracking. They are meaningless in this example. Now the grace period is nearly over, so we can run this at normal speed and focus on the enemy head. And I want you to pay attention to the collecting window. That's this here. Let me pause here to explain a few things, since there's a lot happening on screen. The collecting window logs aim behavior within the allocated time frame, which is about 1.7 seconds. Right now, it's paused at 6, meaning it has recorded 6 head hits so far. The confidence score looks strong, though not perfect, because I'm slightly off-center in the bounding box. Still, it's a clean hit since it registers as a headshot. The approved and rejected buffers only activate once the holding buffer either reaches capacity or times out. This design prevents the model from being flooded, since we only want a small sample of data. Finally, you'll notice the bottom section correctly shows 100% head, exactly as it should. So as it continues, the system checks to see if my crosshair is inside the bounding box. If it is, we collect data, and it recorded 10 hits in total. Now, approved hits are sent to the data nodes. But the system didn't like two of them. The confidence scores may have dropped as I approached the edge of the bounding box, or it was treated as spam. Either way, the hits were refused to protect the entropy engine. You see, if you aim at someone for extended periods, it will mark that as spam so the player is not punished. Each data node has a different size. Buffer 1 stores the most recent activity. Buffer 2 focuses on short-term patterns of aiming behavior. And buffer three is the larger, long-term buffer. Now, these buffers carry different weights that influence entropy. For example, data node one applies lighter updates, while data node three has a stronger impact. But there's more happening that you don't see. Every hit has multiple factors. They are filtered by detection confidence, logged confidence, and each body part, such as head, upper torso, lower torso, and legs, have different weights for different buffers. Now let's look at the upper torso. As you can see, the confidence score is sitting at 80%. That's because I'm more or less right in the middle of the bounding box. It will never hit 100% as it's not trained on soldiers from COD 4, but it's still a positive result. Now take a look at the timer. It's very close to reaching its collection limit, and so far we've logged around 49 hits. Depending on how many are valid, and I expect nearly all of them to be, since I'm dead center, the data nodes will update once the timer hits zero. In turn, we should see an update to the entropy model, with node one reaching capacity and node two either filling up or coming very close. And there we have it. Data node one successfully updated the entropy. Every single hit was logged, none were rejected, and we achieved a 100% success rate. Beautiful, it works perfect. Now, watch what happens when we shift focus to the lower torso. Oh, and ignore the warning, that's triggered because the entropy model doesn't like the pattern. 100% head, 100% upper torso, and 100% legs, with no variation in between. It automatically flags that. But since this is just a demo, we're not cheating, scouts honor. But now I want to show you what happens when a player's aim is more variant. For example, we will target the legs. Watch what happens. The anti-cheat script now recognizes that the aiming behavior is more human-like, spread across multiple body parts, and it will reward the player accordingly. All future entropy updates are locked, 
Since the aim is considered naturally varied, cheats don't do this. They're too consistent. Not only does this protect the player from entropy updates, but their aiming info also turns green, along with a visible bar indicating their protected status. If they drift out of the protection bracket due to aim decay, they lose that protection and go back to being monitored. This helps rule out false positives for legitimate players. I'm still considering rewarding players if they remain in this state with a certain score per minute based on hits. Oh, and I've designed it so the bounding boxes are removed whenever the countdown is in cooldown mode. This prevents unwanted data from being logged. If you look closely, you'll notice the boxes return once the timer goes idle. So with that being said, let's put this to the test. I haven't played Remastered in quite a while, and back then I mostly played Search and Destroy. But for this run, I want to test it on COD 4. I've turned off all the visual clutter, the boxes, lines, and overlays, so we can get a cleaner view. I'll drop in commentary at the key moments as we go. Before I let it run, I want to point out this collection window. When you see red, it means the model isn't confident and those detections will be filtered out. This indicates that the original detection had low confidence. As the player moves, each frame is re-evaluated after it's drawn. The system doesn't track a player. Instead, it redraws the entire frame and generates a new detection every time. Yellow detections are also filtered, while green ones are considered reliable. Now, I know it's hard to believe, but each time a new frame appears here, the entire game scene is redrawn from scratch. As soon as it's drawn, the model checks that single frame for enemies. There's no carryover between frames. Everyone is treated as a brand new picture and analyzed on its own. Notice how I've now been awarded protected player status. This is because my aim is varied and stays within the defined threshold. I've got a solid headshot ratio, consistent hits on the upper and lower torso, and good coverage on the legs as well. If I don't maintain this balance, I'll drop out of protected status. My entropy is now at 1.88. That means I've lost entropy. But this isn't a punishment, it's aim decay. Entropy should generally stay between about 1.90 and 1.23. Even if it dips into the orange zone due to an anomaly, that's fine as long as the player recovers. The real problem is when it drops into the red zone and aim decay keeps triggering. That's when things get suspicious. A common misconception is that entropy changes when a player is eliminated. But that's not true. Entropy only updates through the data nodes. In physics, entropy never decreases unless something intervenes. In this case, that something is the player's aiming pattern. That's why aim decay is such an effective way to identify artificial input. Now, teammates are always tricky unless you filter them out, and we do. We've got two ways. First, a special class that looks for ranks or names above the head and just drops those boxes. Second, you can manually add frames to a filter that removes boxes between them. So, friendlies aren't really a problem for us. I'm not camping, but anyone who's played COD 4 knows there are only two ways out of the C flag. With my entire team covering the back door, that leaves just one exit. Our UAV is online. Friendly airstrike on the way. Standing by. 
I'm still protected because my aim remains varied. And this really shows how powerful entropy can be as an early warning system. I can't praise it enough. So when people claim it doesn't work or say it's fake, honestly, they have absolutely no idea what they're talking about. They simply don't understand computer vision or its capabilities. If I can achieve this without ever reading game memory, just imagine what developers could do. Let's do this. Friendly airstrike on the way. Secure it, C! Helicopter support standing by. Enemy has A! We're taking the lead. Charlie, secure. Now, I want to just show you what's happening here. As you know, green bars are showing aim behavior is good, but look at how many hits have been approved. That's a really good size for the aim variety. Remember the nodes will not receive any new data from hits unless I am removed from the protected status. Now, in this example, I'm not going into the live detections, such as soft aim, cheats, or aimbot. That's something completely different and truly fascinating, but that's for another day. I want to strictly focus on aim decay. You might also be wondering, why doesn't it detect, say, a car wheel as a head, or maybe a pole as a player? After all, it's just a computer working for models. And you're right, that's a logical question. Here's how we solve it. Each data set is trained on an enormous amount of images, hundreds of thousands of them, even adding blur and exposure. The model learns what maps look like, what cars are, windows, and everything in between. Training takes days, and you have to be extremely careful not to overfit. It's a highly delicate process. Entire epochs can collapse if you don't strategically freeze layers and progressively fine-tune. We also integrate advanced augmentations, machine learning, and hard negative mining to force the model into generalizing correctly. It's incredibly complex, but when done properly, the results are brilliant. You don't even need to worry about random objects being detected. Why? I have now been placed back into the protected status because my aim has now fallen within the threshold. That's the distance between the lowest and the highest bars of the aim tracker. Friendly airstrike on the way. Our UAV is online. Now, when the holding buffer collects the hits, it basically has three buckets. Good, average, and poor. These are what we call confidence buckets. If they are green, we take them all. If they are yellow, we take 70% of them, and red, we take half of them. Now red or low confidence are still strong detections, but the model isn't sure. It's right on the line or say head or upper torso. It's not like, is that a player or a car? I just want to pause here because this is a great example. Now, watch as the player mounts the barricade. The upper torso looks fine, but as one of the frames is drawn, look, the legs are detected. This happens because the muzzle flash changes the appearance of the player, and the model can't correctly separate the sections of the bounding box. That detection is a problem, a false positive, but there are measures in place to handle these. If the model were trained specifically on, say, COD 4, you could identify cases like this and train the system to ignore them. As I mentioned earlier, the model already filters detections based on confidence. But even after that, when results are gathered, they're filtered again. And before entering the nodes, weights also play a role. False positives are a major part of my script, 
and the entire system is designed to give players the benefit of the doubt. Now, let's talk trust score. This is affected by so many things, such as entropy, detections, aim decay, and more. The trust score in my model is everything. The trust score will never affect the entropy, it only receives data. It will tick slower while in the green or yellow and faster in the orange and red. The faster you climb out, the better it is. I'm always developing my software, and I've got plenty of new ideas. From restoring entropy during protection, rewarding or even pausing the trust score when a player's aim shows variation, adding more filters to fine-tune false positives even tighter, and much more. Now the player card is generated by the model. It's an actual on-screen overlay with some basic end results. The real info is generated in a professional PDF document when the video is rendered. My model works, and I know exactly what I've built. I believe it should be the frontline defense in all games, because soon, AI will be the only real way to stop cheats. Developers just won't admit it yet. This model detects cheats on PC, console, it doesn't matter. It can even revisit older games long forgotten and analyze them like it was yesterday. I'll go into a more advanced version soon, explaining about the calculations I use, when and why. I hope this small video helped explain some of the basics regarding my analysis software. Please be sure to like the video, and I'll be sure to keep you all updated on any new developments. I'm Call of Shame. God bless every one of you on the other side of the screen.